to none and in a hostile environment here on the road playing Washington. That was Cindy Anderson, Sydney Anderson on the serve to start the third set and Jordan Wilberger comes up with a big kill. That's the way to get it started if you're in Nebraska. Well, that's the first uh, Jordan Wilberger sighting really we've seen so far. The freshman again, you know, probably did not expect to be playing in a regional championship match when she came to Nebraska this early in her career, but here she is, and nice job getting things started on the right foot for Nebraska. A former walk-on, she comes up big again, this time on the defensive end, putting up the block with Lindsay Light. And this is, that's kind of what you expect to see from Nebraska. They started off with uh, getting a free ball opportunity because of a good serve, converted that, and then a big block on the left side attack of Washington. Sydney Anderson's third serve, and that one's going to go long, a service error for the setter, and it will go back to Washington. And what do the Cornhuskers have to do? We know they can do it. How can they do it? Well, they need to reduce their errors. It, it's really, it's simple. I don't need to go into a lot of coach technical speak. They need to hit the ball over and in. And that's really the key. They have struggled. Hot, their hitting errors have been way too high, and that's something John Cook knows. He knows that they're generally not a high error team. So they're going to need to settle down offensively and play at Nebraska's level. Tara Mueller has 14 kills already in the match. That's twice as much as the next Nebraska player. That's Jordan Larson with seven. Bianca Roland on the back set. And it's down in front of Little Barrow Fanwood. Well, Roland doesn't get set that often, but she takes advantage of the sets that she gets. And tonight, she has been dynamite offensively, doing a terrific job. And good genes. Her father, Ronnie, played for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a UW alum, along with her mother, Willie. So some athletic DNA in that family. And Nebraska comes up with a kill, and they're able to get the serve back. But obvious point of emphasis coming out of the halftime is getting the ball to the middle. Wilberger really has responded well. Two kills and a block here early in this game. It, the Huskies really have not had to work too hard in terms of blocking. One of the reasons they've got 10 blocks is they don't have to worry about Nebraska's middles. They struggled so much. Nebraska completely went away from it. Obviously, now they're going back to the middle, and they're finding that's where the openings are in this Husky defense. That was Kendra Carlson on the kill for Washington and pulled the Huskies within one. Here's Jordan Larson, and off the top of the block, and it's 5-3 for Huskers. Well, Jordan Larson knows how to use the block, and she really climbs the ladder when she hits. She goes, and you think she's at the top of her jump, and she just keeps on going. Nice athletic move there. Jumped high, reached high, and found the top of the Husky block. Rachel Schwartz, one of the smallest players on the team at about 5'7". Jordan Larson, one of the taller players at 6'2". This is Bianca Rowland, and Schwartz is there to dig it out. Larson now... Off the back player, Jenna Haglin, and out of bounds. And just as you said, Jordan Larson knows how to use the block, tool off the block, and also tool off the back players. Well, and this is where she's going to have to come up big. She, after the first two sets, was hitting zero. Seven kills, seven errors. Your All-American outside hitter can't perform like that and have your team win in this kind of a stage. So she's really going to need to step up her game as this match continues. There she goes again, Larson. This one nicely dug out by Salvo, kept alive by Tamari Miyashiro, the libero for Washington. Becky Perry, nice dig by Schwartz in the back, sets up Larson. And a good up by Nebraska in the front court. Kendra Carlson with a smoking shot, but it's dug out by Banwell. That was Perry off the top of the block. Set now again for Larson. And this one out of bounds. No one touched it. And that's got to be frustrating for Larson. But that, you know, first of all, Nebraska, what an amazing job defensively. And you can, we're going to get a chance to look at Mia Shiro's amazing play defensively She's as a well. She's game changer. hand in there. But Washington's hitters cannot get the ball to hit the floor against Nebraska right now. They are playing out of their heads defensively. In the first two sets, Nebraska took 15 more swings than Washington, but not able to get anything to land. And it's going to be another point for the Huskies there as that shot misses wide. Miyashiro, the libero, to serve for Washington. Down by a point early on in this third set. Washington leads two sets to none. Jordan Larson tooling off the block. It's what's made her an All-American. Well, it is, and she's stepping up so far here in this third set. One of the things about Nebraska that I find really interesting is that Nebraska teams of the past were never built on passing and defense. They were big, and they were strong, and they played a game at the net. It was all 
about serving tough, and it was about blocking and attacking. But John Cook recognized last spring he had lost four All-Americans. They weren't going to be the same team at the net. They were going to have to focus on the other parts of the game and really have done a great job of focusing on passing and defense. The team has bought into it, and you can see the difference in a match like this on how outstanding a defensive team this Nebraska team is. Well, Kendra Carlson able to respond there and receive more resilience from this young Washington team. Megan McAfee played very well in the first two sets. A sophomore from West Lynn, Oregon. Serves to the libero. Bandwidth as Amanda Gates off the back of Ariel Salvo and out of bounds. And Nebraska is going to get the ball back. Nebraska continues to feed the ball to the middles, feed the ball to the middles, make Washington adjust their block, respect the fact that a middle attack might be coming so they can't cap out on Larson and Mueller. And this is where you realize what a loss Corey Cooper, the middle blocker from Nebraska, is. She's out with a torn ACL in her left knee. Off the block this time is Mueller coming up with a big kill. All of a sudden, that block of Washington that put up so many big blocks, a lot of holes, a lot of balls getting through here in the third set. That's Corey Cooper. She's out, but a B Big 12 selection. Jordan Larson is the reigning Big 12 player of the year. We're back with more volleyball after this. Back in Seattle, Washington, and Washington with the two sets to none lead, but Nebraska leading in the third 10-6. And that camouflage jacket on Corey Cooper, not a fashion statement. In fact, after a bad loss to Colorado, the first loss of the season for Nebraska, Coach John Cook introduced this camouflage jacket. Coach, it was so... What was the story he was trying to tell there? Well, he was saying, you know, at this point we can fight or we can give up. You know, we have to make a decision. It was it was not a good loss. Nebraska did not play well, and he really challenged his players that you know, this is the time to decide what kind of a team we're going to be. And the camouflage coat was the indication, you know, we're going to be fighters. We are going to go down swinging. And so that has been a presence in every match that they've played since. And this could be a point in this particular match. Amanda Gates, the senior, coming up with the service ace. It's 11-6. to six. This is Becky Perry off the back row. And that just was the force. I think Washington realizes they're going to really need to mix up where they're hitting the ball because... Nebraska has their number. They are right in every wheelhouse where Washington's putting it. That's where Nebraska's defense has been. They're going to really have to move that ball around. That's the big serve from Jill Collymore, but right into the net, and Nebraska gets bailed out there with a service error. Collymore did have an ace for the first time she served, but since then she's really been neutralized. Nebraska has passed it well. Obviously an error right there, so maybe not as much of an impact as the Huskies would like to see from Collymore's serve. Sydney Anderson to serve now for the Cornhuskers. The setter right to the libero, Miyashiro. Back set for Swarbrick right in front of Jordan Larson. And Nebraska has pulled within four. Well, a great pass. And again, Washington is a nice job. They've got one hitter on one pin, another hitter on the other pin, or the antenna. And so they're completely on opposite sides. That puts a lot of stress on the block. Great job of executing by the Huskies. Another serve by Swarbrick, the senior. Mueller now using the block and the sophomore showing her experience. She actually started the last nine games last year when Nebraska made their run and were upended by Cal in the regional final. But she's playing well above her years tonight. Well, and she's sort of the heir apparent to Jordan Larson, a very similar skill set. Larson, a senior, will not be in a Husker uniform next year. Mueller is showing that she has got the skills to really pick up where Jordan Larson left off. A nice up kept alive by Washington. Larson actually graduating in a week. She's going to graduate early in December, so her Husker day is really numbered. This could be the last match. Lindsay like just a little too much on that kill attempt. It's out of bounds in the back. You can see Light just wasn't quite in her rhythm. She really needs a good set if she's going to be able to hit it hard. She doesn't do great yet at adjusting to sets that aren't perfect. Is that something that's to be expected with a sophomore? Well, yeah, you know, she's an inexperienced sophomore. Mueller's a sophomore, too. She definitely can adjust a little bit better. And finally, another block for Washington. They've been very quiet here in the third set, but Ariel Salvo says, no, 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 we're still here. We can still block. That was a junior and a freshman combining for that block and putting the roof on Nebraska. This is Jenna Hagman serving for Washington. Larson off the top of the block, and it caught Washington asleep in the back. Becky Perry tried to handle it. 
And if there's one person who wants Nebraska to make it back to Omaha, it's this man. Larry the Cable Guy. Daniel Lawrence Whitney. You know, some teams have fans like the Lakers have Jack Nicholson and, you know, Kentucky has Ashley Judd. Well, Nebraska has Larry the Cable Guy, part of the Blue Collar Comedy Tour, and he's one of their biggest fans. In fact, wore one of their hats on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. So we'll take the celebrities where we can get them. Well, and he's a Nebraska native, so That's he true. loves Plum all City. things Cornhusker, as everyone does in Nebraska. That is true. They have a very loyal following. This team travels like the Royal Rolling Stones and they sell out the NU Coliseum like Billy Joel at the Garden. Back to action. This is Salvo right at the libero and she wins that battle and the Huskies making a comeback. They've pulled within four. I mean, the Huskies aren't out of this by any means, but I really like what I see from Nebraska, the way they're playing. This is much more what we saw last night in their match against Michigan. They are defending very, very well and they're very, very smart offensively. That was Jordan Larson on the kill attempt, but defended well by Washington. Kept alive by Bandworth, and that's easy cherry picking for Becky Perry at the net. That's the set every hitter prays for is that nice, perfect overpass, and there's no blocker there to get in your way, and you can just unload. This is Ariel Salvo into the net of service error. And just when you thought Washington was going to get a little momentum, it's derailed there with a the service error. Well, and that's what happened in Nebraska in the second set. When they had opportunities and they got close, it was an untimely error that cost them that second set. Now it appears that Washington has got that bug a little bit. With Rachel Schwartz in and Lindsay Light out now, what's the focus for Nebraska to keep this roll going? Well, it's going to be getting the ball to Gates and make sure that this Husky block is being honest. Gates has been good, needs to continue to be good here in this third set. And that was Carlson, but the Washington Huskies are just taking advantage of Kayla Banworth, the libero, going right at her. And she's the defensive specialist out there, but they are showing no mercy. Well, part of it isn't Banworth's fault. It's really hard when there's only one blocker up to figure out where you need to be. There's a lot of space to hit. So that's tough. But Sydney Anderson, again, we talk about her. She is the ultimate personality for a setter. She is exactly what they want. John Cook said it's like a perfect marriage. We needed somebody. Here she came, and she's exactly what this team needed. She gives everybody confidence. She is a winner. She knows how to win. And her personality is really going to help this Nebraska team get back into this match by winning the third set. That was Amanda Gates on the block. Of course, Sydney Anderson stepping in at setter after Rachel Holloway decided to retire from the sport of volleyball now at University of Alabama. We're going to take a break here. It's the Huskers leading the Huskies 18-13 to in the third set. West Regional Final, the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship returns to Omaha, Nebraska. Semifinal coverage begins on December 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the 2008 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And, Coach, we just saw this out offensive outburst from Washington. Well, you know, you talk about good passing and how coaches emphasize that. Look at the great pass, and then look what it does to the Nebraska block. They're both right in front of the middle for Washington, which really opens up everything for Kendra Carlson. So you talk about good passing, and all the coaches want to win the serving passing battle. If you serve well, they can't pass well, and you're not going to have that offense. But that shows you how offenses are designed to pull middles away set the ball the opposite way to give a hitter a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And that's just Washington playing in their system, not having to go any uh, anyway outside of it and just spreading the defense. This is Jordan Larson, the All-American serving for Nebraska. They have a five-point advantage in the third set, but down two sets to love as we go back to action. Becky Perry, the sophomore, trying to change speeds, but Nebraska all over it. Tara Mueller comes up again with a big hit, and if there is an unsung hero tonight for Nebraska, it's Mueller, hands down. Well, Mueller has come up big and had some big kills, but it's really amazing how this entire match has changed. Washington was the aggressor in the first two sets, and Nebraska was back on their heels. It has completely changed. Washington can't get a ball down. Nebraska is just hammering, and Washington has no answer. This is Mueller again, kept alive by Mia Shiro. Perry off the block. Anderson back set for Gates. Up by Hagelin. Mia Shiro is there. And a free ball now for Nebraska. Sydney tried to get it over the one-timer. Not fooling anyone is Swarbrick. 
And that one touched the floor. Larson is appealing to the to the umpire, but to no avail. It's going to go point Washington. Well, that's that's a good call. That ball clearly yeah. hit the floor. Nebraska is going to argue, but definitely that ball hit the floor. And just a Actually, funny, the one time Washington gets the ball hit the floor is a complete miscommunication. Nobody knows what they're doing. That's the only way right now they can get a ball down on Nebraska. Yeah, it wasn't exactly an oil painting, but the Huskies will take it. Nice up there by Megan McAfee. This is Perry off the top of the block, kept up by Mueller. And Mueller again on the kill, just out of bounds. And that was just by inches. And now it's 19-15. to 15. The Huskers hanging on to a four-point lead. Well, Sydney Anderson... And Amanda Gates are doing a great job blocking right now on Becky Perry, who really went off on this team, particularly in the second set. But it definitely a different story offensively. A lot of it goes to the Nebraska block. These Washington hitters can't get around them, and when they can, there's a defender right there. We saw the hitting percentage for Nebraska up very much in this third game from the first game, and part of it is Tara Mueller who came up with another kill there. 20-15, to 15, Nebraska five points away now from getting on the board and winning their first set. See if Swarbrick will not be denied finding the open lane in the backcourt, and it's 20-16. to 16. She said Swarbrick and her efficiency, we said she will leave Washington as the most efficient to ever play the game here. Over 45% as we're back to action. A nice pancake by McAfee, kept alive by Washington. Heads up play. Mueller, the block, kept alive by Schwartz. Mueller, again, the block again. Haglin's there. Miyashiro setting. Colin Moore coming from the back row, pushes it over. Larson. And that one's just perfect. Right inside and down for the senior, Jordan Larson. And it's 21-16, Nebraska. Well, Larson, smart piece of hitting, didn't totally uncork on that one, just needed to kind of keep it in, found a real nice spot between the two deep defenders for Washington, and put it right on the end line. This is Anderson on the serve, straight to the libero, Miyashiro, Swarbrick tried to get fancy, and it goes right into the net, and as you said, in the first two sets, Washington really being the aggressors, and now they've taken off a lot of their speed and aggressiveness. Well, and the frustration of not being able to get the ball to hit the floor. Nebraska's defense has frustrated this Washington team. Now they're trying to off-speed for kills instead of staying with what worked, which was hammering it home. But they need to get a little bit uh, of variety in their offense. They're just a little bit too predictable right now. Not enough middle, a little bit too much for the left. And Tara Mueller comes up big once again for the Huskers. 19 kills on this match so far. Imagine what the Huskers would be without her tonight. She's Definitely has the biggest firepower from that top front line. Anderson to serve again. Washington with the pipe set. Nice up by Anderson. Set hot for Mueller, and it works off the block. And you're right, Washington has become completely discombobulated and not able to stop Tara Mueller. And if you're coach Jim McLaughlin, what do you do now, coach? Well, you got to recognize Nebraska's made some adjustments defensively. They're blocking a little bit differently. They're taking the shots away. And they need to do what Nebraska did, which was they forced the middle early, which made the Washington block soften up. That's what Washington now needs to do to Nebraska. they got to get the balls to the middle and try to get that block to soften up. And Washington avoided a set point there with a service error by Anderson and another service error by Becky, excuse me, Jessica Swarbrick. And the third set goes to the Cornhuskers. They are on the board, two sets to one. We're going to take a quick break. It's setting up to be a good one here. Nebraska back on track, but see if they can even up the sets. It's the ESPN Regional Finals, and it will continue.